Matthew, good morning. Thank morning. you for taking some time out for us today. We appreciate it. Uh, I want to start with um, what was arguably the biggest issue that the board dealt with over the last year, and that's the mental health services issue. So kind of give us an assessment of how you think the delivery of mental health services will be better as a result of the process that uh, the board went through this last year. Sure. Well, it is the biggest issue. It's been an issue actually for the last four years. Uh, four out of four Woodbury County supervisors in a bipartisan fashion have, have had issues with uh, Sioux Rivers and support this move. Now, I do think that we will have more stable um, funding and more stable services with Rolling Hills uh, at the start of the next fiscal year. Um, the particular uh, machinations of having uh, us wait a year to go in is not ideal, but I do think in the long term it is a good thing. Uh, as I mentioned before, we've had issues with this region and its governance uh, for quite some time. And I do think that given the legal counsel Woodbury County has received and the steps that we have taken, been ordered by that legal counsel and advised, uh, I do think we're making the right decision. Do you have any second guessing of, of any, anything related to this process, that the, the decisions that you've, you've made, decisions the board has made related to mental health services and this, this conversion to the rolling hills? Anything you look back on and say, could have done that differently, could have done that better perhaps? I look back on it just with a sense of, I, I'm just sad that it, it, it turned out the way it did with some of the discussions. Uh, uh, my opponent actually mentioned underlying racism in discussions about this issue, and I think that when we can't when we can't discuss the facts, it makes it hard to move forward. Um, I do think that uh, it is a it is a solid move for Woodbury County taxpayers, and I think it was a very deliberate move. It was well thought out, uh, and Woodbury County did do everything it could to rectify some of the uh, conflicts. Uh, but even informal mediation a couple of years ago resulted in uh, parliamentary procedure issues and Woodbury was again sounding the alarm and saying if it's an open meeting you have to post it. Just uh, there were so many steps and this became a big issue for candidates and for the media as of the last few months but really for the for the last few years it's been an issue I've been dealing with having been on the board for now three out of four years uh, and uh, it's it's something that uh, I think is is high time to be addressed uh, and, and move, make the decision, and stick with it. We don't need this flip flopping. Ultimately, though, you're confident this is going to be a, a better deal for uh, taxpayers. Plus, uh, services will be better for those who need them yes. in this new uh, new Rolling Hills region. Yes. Uh, another issue that uh, uh, the board has dealt with. Uh, during your term is the guns in the courthouse issue. Sure. If you could tell me, um, just give me an assessment of how you believe the board handled that issue, and then just your own personal viewpoint on whether you believe people should have the right to carry a gun inside the courthouse. Well, for me, I was very clear from the beginning that it was never an issue for me of whether or not guns should be in the courthouse. It wasn't a Second Amendment issue to me. To me, it was a separation of powers issue. I didn't think that the courts uh, should legislate this issue, uh, especially when the uh, opinion came out days after the implementation or before the implementation of the state law uh, in question, uh, which gave citizens that power to uh, sue their governments if they fit, feel their rights are being denied. So both sides, I felt, wanted uniformity. The legislator wanted, legislature wanted uniformity in one respect, and the courts wanted uniformity in a respect that for the first time ever they would seize territory and spaces they had never before laid claim to. And that's why myself, Supervisor Taylor, and others said this was a classic case of overreach and that if Justice Katie wanted to enact this change, he should do so as a legislator. Now, the board decided, much to my chagrin, to backtrack on that commitment. When the board put its foot down, we actually caused the Iowa Supreme Court to revise their administrative ruling, which is big. Uh, local government took a stand and said, 
this is our decision, this is, this is local control. Uh, but then we seated that back for whatever reason, I think to make, make others happy and for a smooth uh, uh, transition to some of the conflict. And we said, actually, we are going to enforce this by the court order and people will not be removed uh, because they're actually violating some law, but it will be contempt of court, it'll be trespassing, and that is a less firm of a legal footing than we had before. And so again, it's not whether I think it's a good thing or not, it's the fact that it was so obvious that the court decided to contramand what the legislature did, and its steps were so brazen that I felt we needed to stand against that. And unfortunately, the issue became, you want this or you want that. No, I just want, I just want the law to, I just want to uphold the law. And I took an oath to uphold the law and not a court opinion from one Chief Justice. So you, you, you the current system that is being used today is not one you support, not one you think should be in place. In, in other words, the one entrance and the, and the, the uh, metal detection, the gun detection equipment that's in place with law enforcement. Actually, I support the one entrance and I support the metal detectors. Uh, similar to what is done at the Iowa Capitol, there is simply screening for lawful carry permits. So again, if it's lawful, I'm okay with it. Okay. In other yeah. words, if you have the proper permit and you come yes, through that in fact, entrance, I, then you, you should be allowed in. Yes. But if you don't, you would be detected by yes. the equipment and you couldn't produce the proper... Yes. In uh, fact, the whole issue was a little bit narrow-minded because the county has several buildings. The county has buildings where, uh, as a CASA volunteer, I know that in the Trosper Hoyt building, sometimes kids are taken away from their families. There's no single point entrance. There's no metal detector. There's roving security, but it's not reliable. It's not always there. Sometimes the courthouse takes precedence, and in this debate, it took complete precedence. I mentioned during the meeting I would support increased security for those other buildings. Okay, that was going to be my yeah, follow-up. For some reason, the courthouse was considered the last stand and the only area worth screening. But there's other areas where there's courts, there's other areas where there's debates and disagreements. And I felt that it was not a very holistic solution uh, because county policy is being enforced by stickers in some of the other buildings. Uh, but you, you do think that's maybe something the county should look at is, yes. is providing security, improved security in some of those other buildings, particularly trial. Yes, I would support increased funding and increased security, and I made that very clear. But again, the debate was not allowed to shift to that. It was all focused on the courthouse. How, how would you rate your uh, board as a uh, steward of the property tax dollar? I think uh, one of my priorities has been to look at long-term planning. And in respect to tax rates, the county has uh, elected to choose a gradual decrease of those rates, which I think is a very good thing because we don't have that yo-yo effect of tax rates go down, tax rates go up, and businesses coming into Woodbury County or wanting to expand don't have that assurance that it's going to be a stable area to, to do business. So we've looked at multi-year budgeting when there's been an influx of revenue. We have uh, decided to say, well, this will be used for reserves for next year in case we need it to guarantee a decrease of the tax rate again because as CF Industries comes online and that valuation comes on uh, stair-stepped and 5% increments over 20 years, it's gonna be very important to have a steady decline in the tax rates to fulfill our promise to taxpayers that half of that will go to property tax relief. And so I think that when we've done that and when you look at the rural communities when we've uh, implemented comprehensive plans for the first time in a few decades, uh, we we're, were able to leverage our funding for the rural communities and leverage grants and find out where it makes sense to spend our limited money because we have a budget a third or a fourth the size of Sioux City, obviously, and it's not our job to compete with the economic development departments of those cities, but to complement them. The CF Industries was, was going to be my follow-up question in that. It's going to be, uh, is it next budget year you'll begin to realize those uh, those monies I believe so you'd be looking at the 
the next budget discussions early in 2019, getting a first opportunity to look at uh, right. at some additional revenue. And and I know it you know it'll grow over time. But your your priorities for uh, use of that additional revenue, what what would they be? How would, and you, you you already alluded to the property tax relief aspect of that. Right. Um, I would say that one of my priorities is also a return to the basics of county government. So the less glamorous aspects of taking care of the roads, ensuring emergency services without a property tax increase, which the board did, and being responsive to citizens in the rural areas, whether they be at town hall meetings or just uh, over the phone or, or taking a ride along with the roads like I've done several times. Um, our roads are in a condition, the gravel roads, where over the last 10 years, gravel prices doubling and our supply uh, dwindling, um, we are needing to focus some investment there, like the county board did in the past with bridges. Uh, I don't see anywhere else that money can come from but CF, and I made that clear that even more of our local option sales tax dollars should probably go to ensuring that the county engineer has the available funds uh, to ensure that those roads are safe, passable, and uh, and good for our county residents. The last time you ran for office, you made a big thing about going out to those smaller counties, mm -hmm. or smaller communities rather than the county. Um, how, how, what have you learned and how uh, communicative have you been with those people during this time? I mean, it's like, oh, I learned everything, but now uh, I'm back mm -hmm. to my job. Or are you out there, are you talking to those people and finding out different things about them now? And how has that changed? Yeah, I've actually found that I'm one of the first supervisors that rural residents contact simply because I made it such a big deal in my last campaign to uh, focus on the rural areas that have been forgotten by the previous board. Uh, when, the, when the county board went to all the rural communities um, in the last few years, uh, we still go out. Uh, it's more regional now. Uh, when I was chair last year, I invited several of the mayors and made it more of a regional effort so that we could get input from all the mayors in the area. And I think it's been, it's been instrumental to rebuilding trust. And so with this you know, gravel issue I mentioned that's come up lately, you know, that's something that was brought up at a, at a town hall meeting. And often the residents feel more comfortable bringing issues up to the board in their hometown. Uh, we get anywhere between 20 and 60 people in attendance at rural town halls. And at a county board meeting, as you know, we could have zero to one. You know, truthfully, that's the average. Unless there's a hot button issue, we typically have zero or one uh, interested uh, citizens that are not department heads. So it's been very helpful, and I think that it's 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 done wonders for just the county board's perception, the mayor's feeling like they can come to the supervisors and pitch projects. And that's one of, the, one of the reasons I support the comprehensive plans is we want uh, uh, their communities to be on the same page when they request some county funding. Uh, sometimes there's division in the community whether they want a water tower or something like that. This allows us to know that there is that community support and we also help them with, with grants and finding other funding sources. What, what do you see the role of the county board as being and what do you support and advocate for in terms of economic development expansion? And one aspect of economic development we've asked the two uh, candidates we were in earlier today uh, is the idea of a, of a mega site, mm -hmm. a thousand acres of contiguous tracts of land certified by the state. And uh, that's been talked about through the years. You know, obviously a difficult uh, mm -hmm. goal to achieve for a variety of reasons. But just talk a little bit about what you think the board's place in all of that is, and then maybe specifically the uh, the mega site part. Well, regarding the mega site, I know that was brought up four years ago, and it would be great. Uh, I can tell you that there have been discussions, and there still are discussions. But the fine line the county board walks, especially the economic development director, is that we don't necessarily want to inflate the prices of all this land and go broke buying the land before we have the project. And so a lot of it has to be methodical. Um, part of the reason it's possibly not been implemented yet is that we've had this focus on the comprehensive plans for the rural communities. and. 
one of the things I, I shepherded in was uh, annual evaluation and performance uh, evaluation of department heads. And so we document their goals and what they, what they think is the best thing uh, for their department. And our head of that department actually recommended the last time I spoke with them against it. Uh, simply because our dollar goes farther in the rural communities when we leverage our funding, uh, when we can get them a com new community center or we can you know, leverage grant money um, or we can assist with dues to Simcoe so they have more resources. And so the whole county is guaranteed to have more resources rather than putting all of our eggs in one basket. But in the background, it still is a discussion that we've been having that I've been involved with the chamber. And it's something that, again, is something you want to uh, unveil at the right time. Uh, but I can tell you that those discussions are taking place. We've talked about this with you before, and that's uh, the relationship between the city and the, and the county, and uh, the uh, more specifically the consolidation of services, the two mm -hmm. entities working together toward that goal. So if you could just speak a little bit to how you believe the uh, relationship is today between city and county, and are there areas that you would advocate for that the two look at possibly uh, consolidating on to save taxpayers money? Mm -hmm. Well, the easy answer is combined purchasing. That's what I gave you four years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, the reality is that the county board has done that where it's able to, uh, but because the county government is structured in such a way where we have several elected officials over our different departments, the purchasing decisions are really in the hands of the sheriff, the auditor, the attorney. They have built relationships up where it makes sense for them and so our job as a county board is to audit those and make sure they make uh, financial sense, which we do on an ongoing basis. In regards to consolidation of services, uh, we have, as you know, uh, pitched the, the, the merging of the assessor's office, which I know the Journal Editorial Board and the Taxpayers Research Council have supported at every election cycle. And the county board finally made a divided vote to uh, go ahead with that request formally. And the city of Sioux City said no. So that uh, uh, the journal again called for, uh, you know, an, an impartial um, uh, citizens committee. And, and I tried to pitch that even in letters to the editor and uh, discussions at board meetings. But again, you're asking for citizens to do your work, and they're not always first to line up. <laughs> if, the, if the committee does not allow uh, elected officials, then you're really all you can do is advocate for this, and I would love to see that a citizen committee form that could combine aspects of the school district, the city, and the county. Uh, but again, uh, sometimes county government, because we do more of our own stunts, we don't have as much of a staff. We pitched that idea right away. We got it. We got it rolling, and unfortunately, the city council said no. Now I thought it would have made sense because uh, they're on adjacent floors. They use the same software. Our county assessor has a pretty good track record of appealing blanket increases from the state, and I thought that would make sense. Uh, and we also warned the city council that not going ahead with that would require a, a hire that would be 20000 or more dollars uh, in, you know, in addition to what they were paying their previous uh, leader, and that's what happened. That's exactly what happened. So, but overall, the channels are, right, are open. The overall yeah, overall is... You believe uh, it has improved during your time on the board? You believe it's a good, positive yeah, in, relationship? In fact, with, back and forth. In fact, with economic development meetings, when we have these uh, periodic meetings with with, super, with uh, department heads that the supervisors directly oversee, we brought in the chamber, we brought in city officials to have those talks on a periodic basis. So that's another thing I think has been improved over the last four years is that supervisors are assigned to different departments and uh, they're really, you know, the committees are much more transparent, so everything is posted online. That's one of the things I made a priority, and I think it's been, it's, it's done wonders for transparency, and it's done wonders even for the auditor's office, so they can easily reference minutes. Ten. Okay. And I don't want to uh, uh, harm those relationships, but it sounds like you're saying on the, on the consolidation of services, the city is more the resistant party to more of that, than the county? I would say so. And again, there's more, there's more staff, there's more uh, you know, you know, bureaucracy there. So again, it's easier for the supervisors to take steps 
uh, than it may be for the council, so I don't want to blame them for having additional staff and advisors. But in some areas, like the assessor's office, I thought it made sense. What are the uh, accomplishments of your first term that you are the most proud of? I am most proud of uh, making many promises and keeping them all. I can say that with a clean conscience. I've increased transparency. I know many of those have been supported by this editorial board, and uh, a lot of them were hard fought. A lot of them were 3 2 votes. Uh, there was a lot of 3 2 votes I didn't expect, including uh, the vote to make Woodbury County the first all LED county in Iowa. That was a 3 2 vote. Uh, it went on to save taxpayers hundreds of thousands of dollars a year and win us a National Achievement Award. Uh, something sometimes personal animosity in politics, you have to take that out. And what I've focused on is not to be afraid of conflict, but just not to be, or I should say, not to be uh, scared of conflict, but just I'm not opposed to it. If it if it's the way to get things done, I, will, I just want the process to work. That's why I focused on committee meetings uh, in my first year. I wanted them to be public. I wanted agendas to be posted. I wanted our agendas to have defined actions stated ahead of time for the public to see. And I wanted them to be uh, posted on the agenda with more detail. Those were supported by watchdog groups, Republicans, Democrats on the board, um, and I went on to unanimously be elected chair based on that. And I think it's important to note that that a lot, again, a lot of those uh, things are low-hanging fruit that we probably take for granted now because the board moved extremely fast in the first two years. But we accomplished everything we campaigned on and set out to do, and I think we changed the culture of the courthouse. I don't want employees at the courthouse to see it as an entitlement to work there. I want them to be uh, to see it as a privilege. That's why we have uh, evaluations every year for department heads for the first time in decades. Uh, that's why we have a, a consolidation of these departments. There's more cross training. I know I'm sharing a lot right now, but it's there was simply so much done in the first few years, and I feel very proud of it because. It was all supported by the grassroots, it was all supported by watchdog groups, and it was, you know, the only struggle was just getting it done, but we did. So if you're reelected, then what would be uh, your top two or three priorities for focus in the next four years? I would say a continuation of that transparency. It's uh, easy to get to the point we are at and, and, and appreciate it, but it's also easy to let it slide, and I think we need to remain diligent on remaining responsive to the taxpayers, not being too set in our ways and not, not just resting on our laurels. Secondly, the long-term planning is a big deal to me. As one of the only uh, MBAs to ever sit on the board, I think it's served me well from a critical thinking standpoint, and just to be methodical, not necessarily the first to speak at every board meeting but to find a solution that makes sense, uh, no matter the personalities involved. Uh, that long-term planning is again why it's important that the county communicates this uh, public uh, perception of steadily decreased tax rates, rather than uh, simply whatever we can pass this year that makes sense for this year. Five minutes, Mike. Then I want to make sure I, I give you ample opportunity for the, the two wrap-ups since we've got about five minutes left in that. I'll combine them into one question. I want to ask you what you think your uh, greatest personal attributes are that you bring to this position, and then just give you an opportunity to speak to the voters on why you think uh, you deserve re-election and are the best candidate in this race. Well, I think that I have shown to be an independent mind, that's, that's the biggest thing. Uh, there's talk of partisanship at every election, but what I've noticed is that in the four years between county elections, that doesn't really muddy the waters. We are able to actually get work done every week. We can say we got something done. And 
I think my independent mind and my critical thinking has served me well. Uh, I will ally with anyone to do right and oppose anyone that does wrong, and I'll stand up for what I believe in, uh, whether it's my faith or economics. I've been consistent. Um, I don't backtrack, and I think, uh, you know, just from a family perspective, I, I'm, I live a balanced lifestyle. I have been married for over seven years uh, to my wife. We met in Honduras on mission trips, and I helped her immigrate, and I also spoke at her naturalization ceremony. One of the greatest honors of my life was to actually be allowed by the district court judge to greet the new uh, immigrants to our country and my wife was sitting right there in the crowd. So I'm committed to this area, I'm committed to Woodbury County, I'm raising a family here, I have a beautiful uh, four month old daughter, uh, that means I have a little bit less sleep right now than I did four years ago, but it's a great place to raise a family, it's a great place to uh, simply serve. I'm tremendously honored and I feel a great sense of pride in, in what I do as a public servant. Um, certainly being the youngest in the state, as far as I know, is interesting. Being the longest tenured member on the board at the same time is a, is a combination that is very rare. And so I want to take advantage of that. I want to not lose either the useful optimism or the experience in representing the taxpayers. And I think that I built a track record of uh, responsiveness and transparency, and I would uh, sincerely ask for your vote. Thank you very much for your time this morning.